Once upon a time, there was a dark age where steam locomotives didn't exist, and frankly, were an alien concept. However, that didn't stop one mad lad from building the world's first steam engine able to move under its own power. The name of this lad was Richard Trevithick, son of a mine owner born in 1771. As a boy, Richard would watch the large steam engines used to pump water out from the mines and eventually became an engineer at Ding Dong Mine in 1797. The engines used to pump water were massive, using low pressure steam which would then raise up into a condensing gear, which would in turn operate the pump. While they worked, they were big, so Trevithick got the mad idea to start experimenting with high pressure steam, something most people didn't like to use because of how dangerous it was. Trevithick wasn't the first to try and use strong steam as it was known, as he was long-time neighbours with William Murdoch, who had developed a model steam-powered carriage. This made Trevithick realise the potential of high-pressure steam, as it would mean an engine wouldn't need a condensing gear and could use significantly smaller cylinders, saving weight and space. He experimented for a while, coming up with many designs for stationary boilers for mines and factories until he eventually built a small, mobile engine that came to be known as Puff Devil. He showed it off on the Christmas Eve of 1801, carrying six passengers around Camborne. After three days of testing, the engine broke. It was left under shelter with the fire still burning while Trevithick and friends went to the pub for dinner and a few pints. All the water boiled away from the engine which caused it to overheat and catch fire, destroying it. Unswayed, he built another engine. It was built by the Colebrookdale Company and supposedly was a rail locomotive. Nobody knows quite what it looked like or how well it worked, as most records of the engine were lost with the only record of its existence being letters written by Trevithick to his friend Davis Giddy. All we do know is its basic design, that it ran on a three-foot plate railway, and that it was responsible for the death of a worker. This was enough for the company to lose interest in the project. Trevithick went back to the drawing board and soon came up with another road-based engine that was later known as the London Steam Carriage. Him and his partner, Andrew Vivian, patented a steam coach fitted with one of Trevithick's high-pressure steam engines. The new design was driven around London for about 10 miles between Holborn and Paddington, clocking speeds between 4 to 9 miles an hour while carrying roughly 8 people. Despite being a technical achievement, the passengers complained the ride was uncomfortable, the carriage was expensive to build, and noisier compared to a horse-drawn carriage. It wasn't until Trevithick and his colleague crashed the carriage into some house railings that they decided to abandon the project, selling the engine from the carriage to a mill that made metal hoops for barrels. Later, in 1803, a pumping engine Trevithick built for a mine in Greenwich exploded, killing four men. Trevithick put the accident down to user error, but this didn't stop rival pumping engine builders from using the story to scare people away from high-pressure steam. Trevithick used the experience to make his boilers safer, firstly by fitting a safety valve that would blow off steam if the pressure became too high. The second was by fitting a lead plug to the bottom of his boilers. Water in the boiler would keep the plug from melting, but if the water dried up, the heat would melt the lead, causing it to safely blow out all of the pressure. Soon, he went on to build what many would consider the world's first successful steam locomotive. He built a high-pressure boiler to drive a hammer for the Penny Darren Ironworks in 1802. In 1803, he came back and asked if he could mount the engine on wheels and turn it into a locomotive. Once it was put together, on the 21st of February 1804, he demonstrated his creation to the world, with much interest from the general public. The ironmaster that patented Trevithick's engine made a bet with another ironmaster for 500 guineas that the engine could pull 10 tons of iron along the 9.75 mile line connecting the mine to the ironworks. The engine hauled 10 tons of iron, 5 wagons, and 70 men along the line in 4 hours and 5 minutes, averaging 2.4 miles an hour. While not exactly fast, the fact that it moved itself and the load at all was impressive. After some more demonstrations, it was found that the engine worked best when running on a level surface. The rails, however, would need to be reinforced as the weight and movement of the engine broke the short cast iron plates that made up the track. The engine was later put back into the ironworks and used as a hammering engine once again. Trevithick was asked to build another engine to run near Newcastle, but it was much too heavy for the wooden rails it ran on. 
A working replica of the Penny Darren locomotive was commissioned in 1981 and currently resides in Swansea. Later, in 1808, he refined his steam knowledge into a new locomotive called Catch Me Who Can, which was much better in design and performance over his previous locomotives. It only ever ran on a small circular piece of track in Bloomsbury and was part of his steam circus, which cost one shilling for a ride. The intent was to show that steam travel would be faster than by horses, but the weak tracks used and the lack of public interest led it to being the last locomotive Trevithick ever designed. Four years later, Matthew Murray had designed a much more successful locomotive using some of Trevithick's ideas, but by then, Trevithick had retired from locomotives to work on other engineering projects, marine vessels, and designing new types of boiler. Richard Trevithick is likely the biggest name you can point to when asked who invented the steam train. Sure, he didn't perfect it, but if it wasn't for him experimenting with high-pressure steam boilers, then Matthew Murray likely wouldn't have been able to perfect his designs, which in turn inspired George Stevenson to build Rocket and so on. So if ever you think you're not going anywhere with an idea, keep at it, because you could be laying the foundation for something much bigger. Subscribe for more.